Right, so thank you to anyone who um, subscribes and follows this channel for information about sort of like what gluten ataxia is and sort of my journey with gluten ataxia and how I got diagnosed and and things like that and I thought disturbed by the cat straight away. I thought because gluten flula Oh so I've talked about how I got diagnosed with gluten ataxia and how I thought at first it was something like health anxiety and instead but I realised in the video I didn't actually speak about what gluten ataxia specifically is and the things behind that um, so I just thought I'd make a video talking about that basically. Um, so gluten ataxia, what is it? So first of all uh, ataxia, uh, that's a Latin medical term for meaning uh, disorder or confusion. And specifically, in this case, the disorder and confusion is to do with uh, coordination and how the brain sort of coordinates, uh, how it moves and keeps its balance and regulates its balance and things like that. Um, but it's sort of a, a larger term is ataxia and, and, to, and underneath ataxia you have things like slurred speech, uh, difficulty with vision, uh, difficulty communicating and thinking. Um, problems with sleep, uh, problems with swallowing and uh, one of the most common factors is uh, difficulty with balance and so that's the main presentation um, with people with ataxia. Um, so there's different types of ataxia, uh, so you have hereditary ataxia, so that's when it, the condition has been inherited and this is due to a faulty gene um, which has been inherited uh, by a person um, but you also have acquired ataxias. So acquired means that you've basically um, gained this type of ataxia during your life. Um, so that can be from such as uh, things like trauma to the head, um, trauma such as in the form of stroke where it's damaged the cerebellum in the brain. And we'll talk more about the cere cerebellum um, later in this video. And things like multiple sclerosis and uh, finally uh, gluten ataxia which is where ataxia is caused by an allergy to the gluten protein. So gluten ataxia is the type of ataxia that I have uh, personally um, and this occurs when the body is producing antibodies um, to specific types of protein that are generally uh, known as gluten but you have different gluten proteins. So these are for, found normally in wheat. Um, but you find them in wheat, barley, rye and oats. Um, so usually it wouldn't be an issue if that antibody just attacks the gluten protein. However, it can also bind to and attack uh, parts of the brain, which is what causes the condition of gluten ataxia. So gluten ataxia is different to celiac disease in that it involves gluten antibodies targeting um, the brain, whereas in celiac disease, these antibodies target the small intestine and cause stomach issues. So you can have celiac disease and gluten ataxia, or you can have gluten ataxia with no celiac disease, or you can have gluten ataxia with some issues in the stomach, but not full-blown celiac disease. And so for that reason, gluten ataxia is sometimes called uh, gluten sensitivity because celiac disease gets more of the sort of press and it's more common and people know that about that more and refer to that as an allergy. However, gluten ataxia and gluten sensitivity is definitely still an allergy and needs to be taken as serious, if not more serious, than celiac disease because the sort of uh, effects of it are sort of more irreversible and are more chronic compared to celiac disease, which is still a very important disease. Um, so, in gluten ataxia, um, sorry, it, so to go back in celiac disease, um, the sort of specific protein and antigen that causes the release of these antibodies is the transglutaminase uh, 2 uh, protein, so that's uh, sort of shortened down to TG2. Um, and when you go to a, a GP's office and you think you might have gluten sensitivity, they would do a blood test and they would look for this specific antibody to the TG2 protein. And if they didn't find it, then they would say, you don't have celiac disease. But what is sort of a common misinterpretation is, oh, you don't have gluten sensitivity or a gluten allergy because you don't have these antibodies. But that's not 
correct because there are many different types of proteins that can produce these antibodies. And that's where uh, glutenataxia is important because in glutenataxia, the specific protein is called tra tra uh, tissue transglutaminase 6 or TG6. And so people with glutenataxia might not have the celiac disease antibodies in their blood and so would appear negative on a GP's blood test. But this doesn't mean that they don't have glutenataxia. And so for that reason, it's important to get a specific blood test, which can only be done in specific places, such as at the Sheffield Royal Hallamshire Hospital in the UK, where they can look for these antibodies. And that's also combined with a brain scan, where they look for um, different uh, levels of brain activity in the cerebellum to see if you have a positive diagnosis for glutenataxia. There are also other conditions that can present uh, with glutenotaxia and gluten sensitivity, uh, such as skin rashes that are appear on the back of the arm, sort of uh, located where on the tricep area, and this is called dermatitis, dermatitis, dermatitis hepatiformis. It's very hard to pronounce, or maybe it's not hard to pronounce, maybe it's just hard for me to pronounce. So if someone uh, with glutenotaxia then consumes any type of wheat, barley, rye or oats, then it means the antibodies are raised and they would attack the cerebellum. And this would lead to the loss of cerebellar Purkinje cells and cause these symptoms such as ataxia and balance issues. Um, the only treatment for glutenotaxia is a complete strict avoidance of gluten and that includes sorts of cross-contamination such as where things have been fried in the same oil as things that contain gluten or boiled in the same water, so you just absolutely need complete just uh, sort of avoidance in terms of like the food needs to be nowhere near food that contains gluten, they need to be completely separate. A uh, perfect situation is a kitchen where it's only gluten free things are being handled in it, but it's very difficult to live a life where you want to go out and eat with friends and socialise, and it's very hard to have complete strict avoidance you would need to go to a gluten completely gluten free restaurant in order to eat out at all and so it's very much individual it's up to the person as to what level of risk that they want to take and how severe they find um sort of coming into contact with gluten um but as a general rule you should just always aim for complete strict avoidance of gluten because this condition um, while people present in many different ways and have different prognoses and different people show different responses due to um, cutting out the gluten it's regarded as sort of irreversible in that these brain cells that are attacked cannot be replaced however as I found um, in being diagnosed early, I found that I've com well almost completely reduced my symptoms. Um, I do still have a lot of flare-ups when I have things like infections and that can produce antibodies um, that can then cause those balance issues for temporary but intense periods of time. But again, it's not something that you want to take risks with. So, in terms of gluten ataxia and awareness about gluten ataxia, uh, things are improving, um, but more can be done to help um, to improve early diagnosis, um, such as in GP's offices where they only see gluten allergies as celiac disease. Um, and so people might go away from there thinking, oh, I don't have an, an allergy to gluten, and then they're continuing to do damage to their brains by eating gluten. Um, so if you would like more information on gluten ataxia, then just leave a comment um, asking me any specific questions and I can do another video on that or I can just reply to you down there. Um, and yeah, I'll just make more videos like this to improve um, and increase awareness around gluten ataxia. So yeah, thank you for listening and please uh, subscribe and comment uh, for more uh, sort of videos like this. Thank you.